and welcome to Nani Yoga. So today's class is a flexibility yoga for snowboarders and skiers and we'll be doing it right here in kind of the back of my house. It's a beautiful autumn day. It's the November now and it's still sort of warm enough to be wearing this. So let's get started. So we're going to start at the uh, exactly where you are and we're going to get straight into it. So we're going to do with this start with a toe stretch which I think is really beneficial for snowboarders and skiers because especially if you don't well, if you ride a lot and ski a lot, or if you just come for um, just your weekend or your week, uh, your shoes probably feel, your boots feel really tight, skiers and snowboarders. So tuck your toes in, and this is the pretty intense version. So I've been talking for it instead of showing you. So this is the less intense version. This is the really intense version. So I've done this a few times. That's why I'm not like aching in pain. So we'll do another couple of breaths here. So just warming up the feet. You know, you need the feet. They're the foundation of your entire body. So um, we'll stay here for another two breaths. And then final breath here. And then untuck the toe. And then we're just gonna get into our mountain pose. Very appropriate as there's a mountain behind me. So you can just bring your feet about hip width apart and then you're gonna bring the feet out a little bit, hands by your side, looking forward. And here you're in your mountain pose. This is a nice foundational, really gentle pose, but quite hard really because um, you've got to stand up pretty straight. And I think we all have tech neck these days where we're just leaning forward and our chests are all crunched in. So let's just open the shoulders, and sort of a little bit higher by your side. You can feel your knees and where you're pressing with your feet is on your big toe. That's it. And then you want to tuck the bum in and feel the core. I want to stay here for another two breaths. Final breath here. And then here we're going to need a little bit of balance, which I think is kind of necessary if you're skiing or snowboarding. Even if you just started to snowboard or ski, you need balance. So you're gonna need a bit of core strength. So we're gonna lean from the mountain pose onto the right leg. And if you need, and you have a wall nearby or a chair, you can always use this just to help you balance, but eventually try and take your hand away just to balance a bit more. And then you're gonna lift the foot up. Very good. And then you're gonna bring that left knee in. And to make it easier, if by this point you are wibbly wobbly, hold the core in and look somewhere. So I'm going to look at you guys into the camera and keep looking at that same place and hold my knee in. And here I've got my hips a little bit lopsided. So I'm going to bring the hip down, which is going to feel really great if you are a snowboarder or a skier because um, there's a lot of um, hip strength that you need there. So let's kind of even them, out, even them out, especially if you're a snowboarder. And here, just to distract you, I'm going to point the foot down and point the foot up. So obviously if you've got a table or a wall, just do that. And if you are able to balance, just stay where you are. We'll do three more. And then we're gonna point the foot down. You're gonna untuck those hands. So still, if you've got the wall, you can use that or the chair. And you're gonna bring that foot out in front of you. So you can bring it as high or as low as you need to. But what I want you to do wherever you're high or low is to not drop the hip. The hip is staying nice and straight. So the higher you've got it, the more you'll work out those hips. And then we're gonna exhale, bring the foot down. We're gonna do the same on the other side. So bringing the knee up, the right knee this time. So you're gonna press down onto the left knee. You're gonna bring the right knee up in towards your chest. Very nice. And then here, like I said earlier, you can have the wall or the chair down there. You're gonna hold. Another three breaths here. It's a little bit too quick, I moved my foot and I nearly lost my balance there. Okay, and my final one more breath here. It's actually a lot colder than I thought it would be. <laughs> and then knee, uh, foot up and foot down. So we'll do that about five times. I think we always um, overlook how much our feet does for us and I always like to in my yoga classes to focus on that. Um, I teach skiers and snowboarders yoga in winter in Miyoko here. Um, so bring both hands back down by the side and then right foot up towards the sky. So here you don't need to, this took me ages to be able to do this. I also did ballet as a kid. So 
that was even worse, but um, you can bring the foot down. I mean, that's still working out your hips, right? And bringing, you know, strength and flexibility is something that needs to be combined together. So hip down, and then if you can bring your foot up, you can. The knee can also be bent. Another two breaths here. And then inhale, foot down, exhale, bring it all the way down. Hands by your side, back in your Tadasana. I'm gonna inhale, hands up to the sky. We're gonna exhale, we're gonna fold forward. And here we're gonna do a forward fold. So how you do it, if you have lots of hamstring flexibility, you can keep your legs straight. If that's still not something that you can do like me, never mind. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna face the sun actually. Um, we're gonna bend the knees. And essentially what I'd like you to do is to feel the stomach on top of your knees and then bend the head. I mean, bring your head down can't bend your head and then here you can want to just generally have your hands either touching the floor the mat the back of your legs or just you can bring them both uh, both hands to your elbows and just rock yourself just a little bit gently I actually find this pose incredibly hard but it's, it's also kind of nice you know, make your spine feel nice and long and it also kind of works out your legs if they're bent <laughs> and eventually one day your legs will be dead straight and you'll be completely stuck onto your legs but um That'll maybe take a few more tries. It'll take me a hundred more tries, I think. It's two more nice deep breaths here. Then we're gonna exhale, bring the hands down. And we're gonna bring the feet out to the side of your mat. You're gonna bring the bum down. So if your heels are coming off, that's not a problem. And if your bum's a bit higher, it's not a problem. For me, I can bring my feet down and a lot of Japanese people generally can. I think it's from um, sitting uh, cross-legged on the floor all the time. So uh, your elbows are gonna tuck into the knees. And you're gonna press them away, which is gonna open up your hips. And now we're focusing on the hips now, and then we're gonna straighten the spine. So what can tend to happen is you got your feet up, you crouch forward, but try to bring the chest out towards the front, away from the body. It doesn't matter too much about your feet, it's more um, the spine should be nice and long. And looking forward. A few more nice deep breaths here. So if you ever come to one of my yoga lessons, I call this old man smoking pose because in Japan that's how a lot of old men and um, construction workers sit. It's like a very manly smoking pose. Um, you'd be surprised actually in Japan, people smoke a lot. Um, it's quite cheap, I guess. We'll do one more deep breath here. And as you exhale, we're gonna bring both hands out further out in front of you, like you're kind of a frog, and then you're gonna bring both feet behind you, and we're gonna get into a plank. So, what tends to happen with plank is that you tend to not you, but um, either if it's too low, you'll feel it. You'll feel it in the lower back, and that you shouldn't be feeling it there. If you're too high, you'll be all in the arms rather than in your core. So here you really feel it in your core. So the way to do it is to press the chest up away from the mat, all the way down into your fingertips. You can really feel all that strength in your body and feet back. Sometimes when I'm filming, I notice my butt's really high. So if I have my butt really high, I'm so sorry to tell you off about having a high, low butt and then I'm doing the same. So here we're gonna stay for another deep breath here. And we're gonna exhale bringing the knees down, feet down, we're gonna exhale into a child's pose, elongating that spine. And then we're gonna press the hands out in front of us. We're gonna bring the elbows down, we're gonna bring the legs back. You bring your stomach down onto the mat. And you're gonna press on the palms of your hand, chest out towards the front, shoulders down. So what tends to happen, I think from iPhone generation, old or young, I think we're all sucked in now. Um, the shoulders are down, but actually what you wanna do is press down the elbows, chest out, and then butt squeezing together. So what I mean by the butt, I mean like more the glutes. And you can really feel it all the way down into your feet. And we're facing forward for two more breaths here. 
and then pressing your palms down. We're gonna press onto the knees. You're gonna bring yourself back into your child's pose again. So here your head doesn't have to be touching the mat and your bum doesn't have to be on your feet either. It's just more your arms. Just give them a little bit of strength so that you can feel that you're pressing the back of your spine. You can feel have a nice long spine and you're stretching your back. So all the way from your lower back to your head. And then we're gonna go back again. So both hands out in front of you. We're gonna stretch the chest again. So we're gonna bring the chest down, the bum up. And here you can always cupcake your hands. So you can bring, so that's gonna make it a little more intense. So cupcaking the hands, like you've got a cupcake underneath that you don't wanna squeeze. You're gonna bring the elbows down and then the chest down. Oh my goodness. I can feel it. And otherwise you can bring the palms down and then bringing the elbows down and the heart down. So your chest down towards the mat. One more breath here. And then bringing your hands, uh, <laughs> and then bringing some strength and back into your hands. You're going to bring yourself back into child's pose. And then we're going to bring both hands out towards the left. And you're going to stretch the right side of your body just for two breaths. The hands are slightly to the left rather than the center in child's pose. And then we're going to inhale back to center. And then we're going to go to, we're going to go to the right. So right, down, left, arm down. And then inhaling, hands back to center. Then we're gonna hit, get into the hips a little bit more. So hands out in front of you. You're gonna bring the right knee forward towards the right hand. And then you bring the right foot towards the left wrist. And then you're gonna bring the left leg back out. So what tends to happen here is that you might fall onto the right bum. Rather than doing that, it's, it's like, honestly, it doesn't matter how far you stretch because there's only so much your body can stretch if you're not naturally flexible. If you're naturally flexible, watch out to put strength into your flexibility don't just dump into your body so you're gonna bring your hip left hip down and the right hip right <laughs> back a little bit towards the right so that should sort of straighten out your hips so what i also tend to see is that right hip back left hip back and then the the shoulders are skewed but actually you want them to be straight the chest is straight and here if you're staying here and this is pretty um intense ready you can stay here if you're actually really flexible you can always bring the foot out into a 90 degrees it's going to be more intense on your bum and then we're going to exhale we're going to get lower down just for two breaths here you're welcome to stay here for longer if you'd like to stretch your hips out further this is the best stretch post snowboarding or skiing honestly it feels so good <laughs> So inhaling, bring your hands down, putting a bit of pressure there, we're gonna come up. We're gonna do the same on the other side. So what we're gonna do is bring the left leg forward. This is kind of the fancy way to do it. I'm gonna bring the right leg behind and then we're gonna bring both hands out in front of you. I'm gonna bring the hips out forwards. Very nice. And then here again, we're gonna straighten the, the hips. So right hip forward a little bit, left hip back a little bit. We're gonna look forwards. So you can stay here and don't forget your chest should be facing forward. Look at those lovely hips. Oh, there's a bug. Go away. <laughs> Ooh. This is the nice thing about it being maybe 15 degrees. Uh, I don't know what's that in Celsius Fahrenheit, like 50 Fahrenheit? I've no idea. Um, but that there's less bugs. If I did this in the summer about a month or two ago, yeah, I'd be done. <laughs> But now in hindsight it's cold. So one more breath here. And then we're gonna exhale, we're gonna come down, two more breaths here. And then pressing the palms down. So you're gonna bring yourself up. And then we're gonna bring the right leg back up. Then we're gonna sit. And here we're just going to do we're gonna focus on the spine. So we're gonna bring both hands out to the side. So we're gonna bring the right hand and left hand up. And bring the right hand up to your left 
knee and then the left hand is just going to be behind you and you're just going to look behind. We're going to do the same again on the other side. So one more deep breath, stay here. And then as you exhale, we're going to come back to center. As you inhale, we're going to look behind. And as you exhale, we're going to look a little bit more behind us. Then inhaling, we're going to come back to center. Then hands on top of your knees. We're going to face them down just to keep ourselves calm. And we're just going to do some half neck circles. So we're going to roll our neck down. And then we're going to roll the neck to the right. One more on this way. We're going to do it again on the other side. So, oh, sorry. We're going to do circles this time. So, we're going to do three circles. So, you're going to inhale up and exhale down. Inhale up and exhale down. Inhaling up. And as you exhale, we're going to come down. But this time, as you go down, we're going to go to the other side. So inhale up. Whichever side you started with, we're going to do the other side. So two. Three. And then we're going to come back to center. And here we're going to do three breaths. So we're going to close the eyes. And we're going to inhale through the nose. finish with that breath we're going to exhale through the nose again inhaling through the nose and exhale one more inhaling through the nose and exhale Then you can either keep your eyes closed or open them up. We're going to bring both knees in towards the chest. And then we're going to bring both feet out, just like about hip width apart. Bring yourself back. And you're going to bring both hands out to the side. And you're going to gently close the eyes. We'll do just a quick Shavasana here. Do a final resting pose. If you're not sure about Shavasana, I did a yoga challenge. So I'll link it below just so you get a really long one. If you're very stressed, it's the best thing you can do. So all you need to do here is just relax. There is nothing else for you to do. Here. As you inhale, we're going to bring both knees in towards the chest. And just remember here to thank your body, letting it walk, ski, snowboard, either or or both, and do yoga and stretch. I'm going to bring yourself to the right side of your body. Just take one breath here. And then Bring your left hand down, we'll bring ourselves back up, just into a seated position. And then just have one last breath together, hands by your side. We're going to inhale, hands up to the sky. We're going to bring the hands up to your head. You're going to have good, loving thoughts for yourself and others. Bring your hands to your mouth, have good and loving communications for yourself and others. And then bring your hands to your heart. Have good and loving intentions for yourself and others. Thank you so much. Arigato gozaimashita. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like because if you like this video, something happens with the algorithms and then it just makes this come 
to other people's faces um, so that they can also do some yoga before or after skiing and snowboarding. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, press the bell to get notifications of new weekly videos. And I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you're in Yoko, don't forget to check out classes. I'll put the timetable below. And um, that's it. Thank you so much. Arigatou gozaimashita.